Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm Brandon. I'm a guy who flies. I'm sitting down today to share a list of the ice cream truck just decided to pull in the neighborhood. Wow. Fly, fly. I'm starting a new series geared towards new hire flight attendants. Today's video in the series is going to be random gadgets that I found over my three years of being a flight attendant to be very useful. So again, these are things that I found to be useful, but they are completely random. So you might find that some of these items have no worth to you as a flight attendant, and you might find that some of these can be super, super helpful for you. So stay tuned throughout the video. I think there's about 10-ish things that I'll share with you, and I'll also try to briefly share the use of the item. Links for any of the things that I can find will also be dropped down below in the description box. So let's get into it. The first item is going to be my Hot Logic Mini. I would recommend that any new hire flight attendant get you some type of portable oven food warmer device. I also have a Savit Heat portable oven that I've also done a video on in somewhere. In the midst of all of my videos, there's a video on my Savit Heat, but I just grabbed my Hot Logic for the vi this particular video. They make these portable ovens with a traditional outlet plug, and they also make them with USB plug-ins so that you have options of where you can use them. I believe they were ideally fan favorites for RV users and people who camp and things of that nature. It is not the 4th of July yet. However, they quickly became a fan favorite of flight attendants. A lot of airlines do not allow you to plug these up on the plane, so you have to follow the guidelines of your airline. However, on layovers, if you're in a hotel room and you, you do not have access to a microwave or there is not one in your room, or you just don't want to go downstairs, plugging this up in your room is a lifesaver. So, hot logic. Next up on the list is going to be some type of electronics or cables organizer. This is the one that I have used the longest. I've gone through several iterations of them. Lots of different pockets for all of your electronic devices. You all know I also vlog, so I keep camera equipment and editing tools in here as well, as well as my extra charging banks and all of the cords for everything for my phone, AirPods, Watt, tablet, personal laptop, camera, company tablet. Like there's a lot of things that could be plugged up because flight attendants are creatures of habits. I know where every cord goes. So when it's time for me to pack up and leave a hotel or a layover, I can immediately look at this and know if there's a cord missing. So I'm less likely to leave a cord behind. Next on the list is going to be some type of water bottle. Hydration is so important. I feel like every flight attendant on YouTube has said, make sure you hydrate, make sure you drink water. We only say that because it is the truth. A lot of times you can get water off the plane, but starting trips and in between the trips, or you might not just be a fan of the brand of water that your airline actually caters the plane with. So instead, don't rely on them. Have your own water bottle of whatever size. You need to stay motivated to drink your water. I personally love this one because it has the Brita filter in it because you are all over the country, you're in different countries, you're drinking water from everywhere, you don't know the state of the water that you're consuming, so I just always find it a little bit easeful to have a water bottle that has a built-in filter in it. And I love the size of this one, it does not take a lot of space. I can either put it in my tote bag or I can clip it on the side with a carabiner. So super useful, to stay hydrated. I definitely make sure I go through multiple of these in a day. The next item on the list, hear me out, is a calendar. Whether it be digital or in paper form, get in the habit of using a calendar. When you first come on the line as a new hire flight attendant, there are so many dates and timelines thrown at you. You're gonna have dates, events, anniversaries, birthdays, all those types of things well off into the future people are going to constantly be inviting you to things i find it easiest to write them down put them in your phone you decide what works best for you not only do you have all of the dates and appointments and events in your personal life you're also going to have them for work so it's helpful to know things like oh you just got assigned a base and that's not the base that you want but base fan tra transfers open on this day and they close on this day it's very helpful to know what day they close and what day they open because that's something that you might forget in the midst of being on the line trying to learn how to be a flight attendant juggling reserve sleeping or not sleeping because you're basically on call all day long and you really don't know it's very easy to forget so get you some type of calendar 
pocket size, big size, desk size. The phone also works for a lot of people because many of us keep this in our hand more than we keep our hands in our hands. So figure out what works best for you, but get in the habit of using a calendar, at least to start. The next item of advice, get you an extra phone charger, okay? Get you five and below, dollar stow. It really don't matter as long as you're ready to go, okay? Especially when you're on reserve. And as a new hire, typically you are on reserve. And you being at your phone and phone available is something that's very important. You don't want to miss a call or you don't want to call back too late. You don't want to miss alarms and other things that you said. Get you a phone charger. Get you an extra phone charger. Keep this on you. Have your phone charger that you use all the time but get you an extra one and bury it in some crevice or corner of your bag or your handy dandy electronic organizer just in case. When this goes out and you're on a layover <laughs> and you have a 3.30 a.m. alarm set on your phone and it's, you know, nine o'clock at night and you go to plug up your phone because you're going to sleep and you don't hear that little and you unplug it and you plug it back in and you plug it back and it don't work, don't rely on that wake up call from the front desk, baby. Keep your extra charger on deck because something's gonna happen. You might be in an airport, you're on an extended sit, you pull out your charger, you plug it up. Next thing y'all are gonna get food. They're calling y'all to board the plane. Now you forgot your charger. You get on the plane, you get to your layover, you have no charger. At least to start, extra charger. Let's talk tags. Most airlines have guidelines in terms of your crew luggage and baggage and what that can look like and the sizes and the brands and the things and all of that. However, what is universal across many flight attendant bags is the use of a J-hook. J-hooks make it very, very useful to carry two or more bags, I should say, at a time, specifically to level the weight. There are a lot of physical demands as a flight attendant, and so one of the things you want to be conscious of is how you're treating your body, especially from the very start. So you want to be conscious of how you're balancing the weight of your bags when you roll them because that risk is something serious, and you, you want to be careful that you're allocating weight into the right places. J-hooks make that really easy because they hook onto your luggage some roller boards, have the built-in J-hook hook, so you can just buy this attachment, plug it in, bam. You can hang your tote bag, you can hang your, your lunch tote from this towards the bottom, but typically your heaviest item is what you wanna hang on your J-hook. They also make them, like my particular bag, they did not come with the built-in attachment, so they make them where you can buy them and you just hook them over that strap, plug them in, get you a good J-hook. They make them in many styles and varieties. This is one that I had early on, I hated this little piece of action because trying to hook it on and off really quickly getting on and off the hotel vans a mess so trash i don't even know why i still have it i never use it let's talk crew tags everyone's always excited you graduate you get on the line some people are quick to get a crew tag nope make sure you're also following your company's guidelines if they have guidelines on the things that you can hang or adorn to your bag but also be aware of the type of crew tags you get crew tags are great okay let's talk about the purpose the purpose ideally is to identify your luggage as a crew bag, specifically because for most airlines, flight attendants store their luggage in the overhead bins in locked or unlocked apartments that are near passenger baggage. So when passengers are deplaning or when passengers are just on the plane period, there is a possibility that they could go into a bag or take a bag that does not belong to you, but it belongs to a flight attendant because how many people come on board with a black suitcase, okay? Which is typically what most flight attendants have. So crew tags immediately identify a bag as a crew bag. Many different styles, varieties. They come in really fun sayings and things. Just a lot of flight attendants match their personality to their crew bags. There are generic crew bags. There are base specific crew bags that will tell you that this is a crew for this specific base. You know, like I said, personality. Rep your set. There's also airline specific crew tags where you have the ability to say, I'm a crew member for this airline. Crew tags come in many different forms of varieties. Some flight attendants will tie an extra scar or an extra tie of their uniform brand to their crew bag as a way to identify. Lots of ways to do it. Only thing I would say to note, be cautious in the beginning of getting super branded crew tags like with a base 
Especially if it's the base that you was just assigned out of training because <laughs> unless you live there and you have lived there for decades and don't plan on leaving there, there's a strong possibility that you might transfer out of your initial base. So, <laughs> get you a cute little doot to doot crew tag unless you're okay you got it like that and you want to waste the money on it. But get you just a generic one until you get to your forever base or your quote unquote I'm going to be here until I'm not here anymore base and then you can go all out. Next up on the list, get you some type of all-purpose bag that you can use on your layovers that does not take up a lot of space. I love this particular bag. It's actually new to me. I actually haven't had the chance to use it on a trip, but I got it. This particular bag folds into itself, but when you unfold it, it is a canvas type tote bag. I have been using the heck out of this bag here at home in Miami. It is the perfect beach bag because one, I can throw everything into here. Two, it has this little inside pocket. So it's not, you don't lose everything. This is the pocket that it actually folds back into. But the best part about this bag as a beach bag is that it's made of mesh. So on the beach, literally any sand that it's got in here shakes out. This is also great if you have a layover in any type of city that has you, you're going to a market and things like that because you can just grab it and now you have a way to, you know, have your collectibles with you on the go. I love the size of this one, especially when it's collapsed. It fits perfectly in my rollerboard without taking up a lot of space, which is something that is at a premium in a flight attendant's bag. Real random, but another must have gadget in my bag at all times are these little room sprays. Some type of air freshener. It is no secret <laughs> that flight attendants spend majority of our time on the aircraft in the galley. There's also no secret that near the galleys or in the galleys in some cases are the laboratories. I don't know what it is about 5 and 6 a.m. departures, but baby in the mornings, everyone doesn't go before they come to the airport to go. So when they get in the air, that's when they have to go. And it's no escaping that. So I said what I said, keep you a little room fragrance, a little spray, a little something that you can do a quick little, okay. <coughs> not in your face, but you get the picture, okay? Next up on the list is this little friend. This is a can ring and a can ring is literally that. It's a ring for opening cans. If you work for an airline where you have to open drinks and pour drinks, depending on the situation that you work in, the cabin that you work in, the configuration of the planes you work, you could be snapping a whole lot of cans. And snapping a whole lot of cans is not very cute with that fresh set. You know what I mean. In order to protect that little tip of your finger and that fresh set of nails that you just got, you know, after graduation, cause baby, you about to look good on the line. Ha <laughs> ha, get you a little can ring that you can pop on when it's time to do service. And when you in that aisle, snap, crapple, pop. Some people find it unnecessary. Some people find it absolutely helpful. Oh, coming down towards the end, the next item I wanna show you <laughs> is this hot water bottle. So this is nothing more than a silicone like bottle that is wrapped in this nice knit scarf. Of course I got gray because aesthetic. I felt like black would show too much dirt. So this time I got gray. But love these. I actually featured this on one of my vlogs that someone else let me borrow because I was having shoulder pains, like severe shoulder pains. But nonetheless, this is really great for my girlies and my guys who get cold really easily or stay cold on longer flights because lid comes off, you fill it up with the hot water from the coffee maker on the plane, that water comes out hot, hot. So you just fill it up and this little bladder can rest wherever you need it to rest in your lap, behind your back. In my case, I was using it on my shoulder, but super handy. Somebody, my friend put me onto it and then somebody else let me use theirs. And when I used it, so they come in a variety of sizes. This is actually a smaller size because this one fits again in my tote bag. And I also feel like this is the type of thing you can repurpose. So ladies, that time of the month, you're on a layover, you need a little extra, you know, comfort, whip this bad boy out in that hotel room, go to sleep quite nicely. So the next two items, I just want to show them together. They are safety equipment and they are these two things. So this is just a portable door lock. Very popular amongst the flight attendant vloggers. You probably have seen them on, people feature them on their videos. I will 
put out a little preface note that these do not work on all doors, okay? They do not work on all doors. However, they do work on most doors. I've tried them. Do I use them? No. Six years of working in the um, hotel industry taught me a lot about hotels, so I just don't feel like I need that extra layer of protection. And I also feel like this is something, well not this one, but this one for sure is something that I would leave in a hotel room, you know, when I'm having a disagreement with the clock. This one, you just affix into the actual door and the handle. That's that one. This one actually sits at the bottom of the door, so you kind of bot door, bottom of the door. You wedge it at the bottom of the door, so if for some reason your door opens without your knowledge, it presses down on this like pressure plate, and then it sounds off an alarm. You're able to control the alarm on a um, high, medium, or low setting, and it's loud, like loud, loud. I don't have a nine volt battery in here right now to show you all, nor do I think that would be quite nice to my roommate or my neighbors, so I'm not going to do that, but I actually sell these as a a two pack, so if you're someone who is just really iffy about hotel rooms, especially if you end up in a room with a connecting door, get you the dual pack or two of these or two of these and you put one on the main door and one on the connecting room door. They sell these as a two pack, so you can you know you can get them like that. The last item I have to share with you is this metal crew tag. I don't know where I got this, y'all. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna have to search far, wide, and low. But I've had this since the day I got on the line. Like I ordered this in graduation. I saw it on somebody's YouTube. I don't even remember the flight attendant at this point. But they mentioned a metal crew tag, and it is so great. It is about I would say the size of like the palm of my hand. So it's not large at all and definitely not thick. But when I tell you it is metal, 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 okay? And this is great because this lives in the top of my rollerboard. It's like in my bag so that whenever I'm random and I have to go through security, I have that in my bag and it identifies my bag as a crew bag. Although many airports, when you do get random, they'll put your bags through in between those bowls and they'll be like crew between bowls for the other airlines the smaller ones y'all know i commute out of virginia it can be a little wishy-washy here and there it's helpful that when my bag grows through the scanner the person that is reviewing all of the bags can see this come up real bright because again metal it's a crew bag i can't tell you if it adds a lot of value to my life but i will tell you that and all of the times that i've been random in security or if i've gone through regular security i have not had Many issues, still has some, but if this was a crew bag, was not one of them. All right, y'all, I think that's it. I don't know if I have anything else to share with you. Like I said, a very random collection of must-have gadgets, all of which go on me with every flight attendant trip that I work. And so, if you are a current flight attendant, please drop down below and let me know what did I miss, okay? Because if we need a part two, we need a part two. But like I said, if you are a new hire, aspiring flight attendant, first, Subscribe to the channel because, like I said, this is a new the start of a new hire series, so there's more to come for you. Also, like the video and let me know that you enjoyed it so I know to keep bringing more of this type of content. I'm Brandon, I'm a guy who flies, and I will see you all the next time. It goes by.